hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about the subject of PS5 SSDs again but more precisely I want to talk about the WD Black SN850 and even more precisely I want to talk about the WD Black SN850 and its heatsink. This drive has arguably one of the best first party heatsinks on the market. I've looked at a lot of SSDs, not just recently with the PS5 bench testing, but also with different SSD brands over the years. And this SSD heatsink is one of the best I've ever seen. It is incredibly compact, but you can definitely tell a lot of work has gone into its architecture with ventilation running all the way through the device. And again, bringing it even close to the camera. If you have a look as we turn it around, you will be able to see that the white heatsink pads inside, let's bring that even closer there, the white heatsink pads inside are very strategically placed there. They're not running all the way along the bottom. There's a distinct difference there between where the heatsinks are and where they are not. Now, why is that important? Well, when it comes to buying an M2 SSD for your PS5, and again, there's lots of brands out there. You've got your Samsung Pros, you've got your Sabrent, you've got all of those different SSDs out there. A lot of these SSDs you have to buy either arrive with optional heat sinks, like the Sabrent's got that big fat one there that's incredibly effective but very, very large, or you have to source a third party heat sink, as you find with some of the other brands like Samsung, who do have heat sinks out there, but they're not as proprietary as most brands. And in the case of WD, with WD, you can get the standard WD Black SSD in 500 gig, 1 TB, and 2 TB but you can also get one that's got the heatsink on top. Now, the point of this video isn't just, isn't it a lovely heatsink we can all go home? There's so much more to it than that. Because a lot of you have noticed that the unit with the heatsink is more expensive. And not just more expensive, it's actually getting harder to get. Because everyone's going out when they're going to buy a WD Black, going for the one with the heatsink. Because they know it's a good one. It's pretty much everyone's saying that it is the go-to heatsink on SSDs, which is a super not very cool thing to say. So earlier on, what I did with this SSD, I say earlier on, about 24 hours ago, I connected this SSD to my PS5, and we did the same intense read, write, and operation, uh, read, write operations that we did in an earlier temperature test. We connected the um, temperature sensor there to the drive's NAND, and then we bench tested the temperature it reached during eight minutes of sustained write and 16 minutes of sustained read on the drive, more so than you're probably ever gonna deal with it in one single instance on your PlayStation 5. Now we got some recommended benchmarks there, which are you know pretty good, I gotta say. Unsurprisingly, it lived at a very decent number there in the 40s, but then we dismantled this heatsink, which by the way was not easy. We had to properly lift up, let's bring that closer to the camera. It's got these clips holding it in place all the way around the edge and we had to raise each one of the two clips on either side and then take the heatsink and then install it inside the PS5 with the Elu Teng heatsink. It's a $10 heatsink. Stuck it inside and ran exactly the same tests. Unsurprisingly, the, inter the WD heatsink was the better of the two. But how much better? Because even though the temperature was lower, it was only by a small margin, as I'm sure you've seen on screen. And some places are selling this with the heatsink, $20, $30 different, and that's quite a lot when you think the heatsink is eight to $10 in the middle. And when later on, I compared those results against the test we did a little over a week ago taking advantage of the giant um, heatsink from Sabrent, where the temperatures were actually lower than that of the WD. Now, the reason I'm bombarding you with all this information is because a lot of you have been messaging me to ask, should they get the proprietary heatsink? Not just WD, but they've been asking about whether they should get the WD Black with its heatsink and then pay the extra, and in some cases, have a lead time of an extra one to two weeks waiting for it to arrive, or should they go for the drive that doesn't have the heatsink that's available now at a lower price and then buy an eight to $10 heatsink to go on top? What I will tell you is this. If you have access and you can afford a drive with a heatsink pre-installed, get it. Whether this is the Gigabyte Aurorus, whether this is the Fire Cuda 530 or whether it's the WD Black 850. Why is that? 
a few reasons. One, in every single instance that I've ever seen uh, an SSD, an M2 SSD with a heatsink attached, they're always a lot more strategic about where the heat thermal pads are. We mentioned that at the top of the video, when you look through there, you can see that white bit there, that's not my finger, that white bit is a thermal pad directly over one of the NAND chips. At the other end here is the controller and with certain angling you can just about make out that thermal pad, just the tip of it there, inside. That's because when this is at the production level, they don't have to make a generic heat sink. They make one heat sink to fit one drive. Therefore, they can make sure that the thermal pads are in precisely the right place rather than one long heat pad across the whole SSD because the architecture of different SSDs is so different, they have to cover all the bases. And that can lead to slightly inefficient heat dissipation and can actually spread heat a little bit more. Hence the temperature difference there when we use the Eloteng with a more generic um, heat dissipation there because it has to cover different kinds of SSD versus more strategic uh, placement of heat sink uh, pads inside this. Another thing to bear in mind is when you get an SSD that has the heat sink pre-attached at the manufacturing level, that means it's been done in a controlled air and dustless environment in most cases. These things are de designed at the production level in their thousands and they have to control it a lot of the time because of the heat of the NAND and the application process on the PCBs but because it's done at the factory point that minimizes dust it minimizes any kind of airflow climate problems and ultimately creates a much more contained pure heat sink to thermal pad to SSD induction there the last thing to bear in mind, and another reason why, if you've got the choice, you should go for an SSD with the heatsink attached, is warranty. Now, I talk, I've talked a lot about SSDs in the last few weeks when it comes to PlayStation 5, but it's more to it than that. SSDs get real hot, and when they get real, real hot, it drops performance. But the other key word I've been really shouting at you guys for ages there is endurance. Endurance on SSDs, as SSDs are written to all the, all, the, all, the, all the time and read for that matter and electricity is passed through to create that data flow and read the NAND and actually get the zeros and the ones, it can be quite, um, it has degrading properties to the NAND and it can lower its life expectancy. Hence why a lot of these drives arrive with five years warranty, but they also arrive with TBW terabytes written or drive rights per day. This is the manufacturer's way of saying this drive will work at its perfection if within that five year period you never exceed these values in terms of utilization. But even then, it always has a, a wearing factor on those SSDs. So getting a drive that's got both the heatsink and the drive together eliminates any warranty concerns. Very few brands will ever say to you, well, did you use our heatsink? Well, get stuffed, we're not gonna run your warranty. Very few brands will ever say that. However, a contained unit there's no debate. There's no them asking you which heatsink you're using. There's no, oh, what is the environment you're using it in? If you get an SSD and it's in their heatsink, that's the end of the conversation. Short of your PC jumping in a river, your PlayStation 5, you know, thrown into a volcano, please don't do that. They're very rare, you know. Um, but when you've got the opportunity, always, 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 always get the M2 SSD with the proprietary heatsink on top. If it's too expensive or it's not available, I get it. Get the Ella Tang, get the Sabrent big one that we've talked about before, and there's a bunch of other recommended ones in the description or on the NAS Compares article. But I cannot recommend enough. Always go for the heatsink on board. Sorry to be repetition in today's video. It's just a question that people keep asking, and I'm worried that people either cut corners unnecessarily or they aren't cutting corners when they definitely could. I hope this has helped at least one of you. That'd be great if one of you watching this went, oh, that's great, tick. If you enjoyed the video, click like. If you want to learn more about storage for your PS5 and SSDs in general, click subscribe. Visit the links in the description to all of the products we've talked about today. And of course, I will see you next time.